yo, y'all know what it is, Chris Jones. Uh oh, Ike Barron, let's get it. We are back, spoken minds. I know y'all missed us. I know it's been a little while. We had a little hiatus, but we back. Give me a little sports on this good Saturday. Let's dive right into it, my man. All right, man. So we're gonna start right off with NFL. Hey, it's playoff, playoff time. Playoff football time. Wild card week. Wild card. It's, it's, it's definitely some good game. games. Uh, it's definitely some good games going on, man. We got the Raiders coming to Cincinnati to the Bengals. You know, we got a whole lot of flack about Cincinnati. Yeah. I want to apologize to Cincinnati Bengals fans. I did not believe in y'all. We didn't believe in y'all all year. Y'all gave us flack. Y'all deserve to be here. Y'all good. I'm not apologizing <laughs> because I still don't believe in y'all. So Bur- Burroughs has been playing at elite level. He's been and, and they got Jamar two, Chase. They Jamar got two Chase thousand been yard playing. receivers. You got the Raiders on a four-game winning streak. Somebody's playoff drought has to end. The, Ra- been, the Raiders, ain't won, the Raiders gotta, ain't won a playoff game in 19 years. The Bengals ain't won a playoff game in 30. The, who haven't won? Them? The Raiders ain't won a playoff game in 19 years. The Bengals haven't won a playoff game in 31 years. Yeah. The last time the Bengals won a playoff game was 1991. When they beat the Houston Oilers, it was in January of '91. They beat the Houston even, Oilers. I hadn't even turned 11 yet. I was 10 years old. <laughs> but guess after they after they won that playoff game, guess who they lost to that next week? The Raiders. So who you got winning this game? I have the Raiders. <laughs> As for you, Adam Kent. Hey, Adam. Vance Wade. Woo. Willie May. Woo. All you Bengals fans. Hit them up style. Let's go Raiders. Uh-oh. Man, I, like I said, man, I'm, I'm proud of the Bengals getting there. But, <laughs> but, I got the Raiders winning too, man. I'm sorry, man. It's, the Raiders got a feel-good story. Everybody's been counting Derek Carr out. Uh, they done lost Gruden. They done lost Henry Ruggs. They done lost Damon Ornette. And they keep finding a way to win. This is a rematch from week 11. Uh, when the Bengals won 32-13, I think the Raiders win this matchup. And Waller back, too? Waller's back. Waller's back. Uh, Josh it. Jacobs has been running pretty good during this four-game winning streak. I got the Raiders winning 33-30. And uh, Cincinnati, y'all at least made it. Be happy with that. 32 years before you win, uh, <laughs> be- before you could try to win another playoff game. Because it ain't happening this year. Let's yeah. go Raiders. I can't stand the Bengals. Woo! Let's get it, Raiders. Let's uh, go. Uh, that's Let's tough right there. go. That's tough, man. Next game, next game after that game is uh, the Patriots are playing the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills are favored. Uh, who you got winning that game? Man, I would tell you right now, I, I want to go with Buffalo. But the weather up there is supposed to be freezing, it's freezing, supposed to be six degrees. freezing, six freezing degrees. cold. So that means it's going to take a lot away from Josh Allen yep. to be able to throw the ball. So it's going to be a good, uh, you know, having to run the ball a lot, which we've seen the first matchup between them. Uh, yep. The Patriots threw the ball three times the entire game, yeah. and they just ran all over Buffalo. I believe it's going to be one of them type of games. Um, yeah. I'm not saying Buffalo can't win, but I, I'm going to go with the Patriots in this one. Man, it's odd that we're agreeing on things, but I'm going to just make it real simple. Never bet against Belichick in the playoffs. Patriots win 17-10. For all the stuff he said, but you never bet against Belichick, 17-10, Patriots move on to the next round. He's going to have that defense ready. All right. First game tomorrow. No, you ready for this, man. The we, Eagles. We got the Eagles traveling to Tampa Bay. They come to Tampa. Now, I don't know. Hey, the, the bookies may know something, man. It's an eight and a half point spread, man, going Tampa Bay's way. I ain't even really got to ask you who you got winning. Not, not are you going to say Jalen Hurt? The Eagles are coming to Tampa. The Eagles coming to Tampa. Just to fly back to Philly. <laughs> because they're going back home. They're going, ah, shit. I mean, people are going to say, well, Tampa only won like 28 to 22 when they it played was, it this was year. A close game. It was, it was not close. close. We were busting their heads. It was close. And we no, man. We let up it in the we let up in that fourth quarter and they started to come back a little bit, but we was busting their heads. And that was without Gronk. So I tell you what, man, I so bad want to take the Eagles. Like, I'm trying to figure out a way to save the Eagles. You, you want to take the Eagles because I, of me. Yeah. But yeah. But 
Who you, wants to look but at you this? Don't, but you don't want to be you don't want to be stuff. foolish and pick the eagle. The Eagles. Man, the only what, reason man. the Eagles even got in the playoffs is because their schedule got real easy at the end. They got lucky and played a couple teams that was dealing with COVID. This man's talking about luck. Yeah, you want to talk luck. about luck? It was luck that y'all got Tom Brady. That was luck. How was it luck when the when the person wants to come to to he, you and he play? He wanted to come to San Fran, but we're not going down that path. Anyway, man, Tom now, Brady. He didn't go no to San good, Fran, and no, y'all got stuck with Jimmy G. I, 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 you can't bet against Tom Brady. No good one, no AB. He's not going to have no problem. I will say this, man. Tom Brady is on a mission for the Super Bowl. The Eagles are just happy to be playing another week. They are not the same. They are not the same, man. Not the, the Eagles same. are just the Eagles and the fans are just happy to be in the playoffs. But as you said, man, they're going home. I predict this game is going to be a blowout. 42, 22 bucks. I don't even think Tom Brady's going to be playing in the fourth quarter. He's going to be <laughs> he's going to be looking at his tablet and studying film for next week. That's how this game going to go. Yeah, that tablet's going to be uh, crystal clean. He ain't going to be playing in the fourth quarter, so he's going to be relaxing, getting ready for next week. That's what I got for that game. Man. All right. Ne- the now, next the game. next game, the real game. The, the real game. game of the week. You got the San Francisco 49ers going to the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to let you go. Who you got that game? Don't say nothing silly. I'm going with San Fran. There you go. Like, there you go. I, the, and the only reason I'm going with San Fran is because I think I think matchup-wise, San Fran is a horrible matchup for the Cowboys. The, yeah. the Cowboys is built on their offense. I mean, even though the defense has some good players, yep. um, especially Michael Parsons, who I think should uh, – should be in the argument of winning defensive player of the year this year. year. Defensive player of the year. Yeah, defensive player of the year. He's tough, man. He's tough. Uh, He's a bad man, but, (laughs) you know, they got Diggs who gets gets a lot of interceptions, but he gives up a whole lot of yards. He gives up a lot, man. But the the San Francisco 49ers, the physicality of that, especially of that defense, I think is going to wear into the Cowboys. I think you get on the nose, man. If if Jimmy G doesn't turn the ball over and just – Game managers, they they're gonna be all right, and I believe the Forty ers pull out pull out the upset. I ain't got no hurt, man. Jimmy G would have made me lose it if I did, cause Jimmy G he's 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 all over the place. But I will say, man, I think Shanahan's gonna have him ready. I think Shanahan, we can easily say Shanahan's gonna out coach McCarthy. Oh, shit. He, Shanahan, Shanahan is he, gonna out coach McCarthy. Shanahan ain't even got to show up to out coach McCarthy. <laughs> McCarthy, I don't know what he's doing, but I can already tell he done blew the game. I don't know so, how he still even I has feel a like, job. I feel like the physicality of the game is not is it's a bad matchup for the Cowboys. Also, I could see Shanahan uh, scheming to get Micah Parsons uh, actually out in coverage and not blitzing. You know, making him coverage, taking him out of that, and I don't think the Cowboys are just. Plus, one thing about the Cowboys, they can't put together two good offensive games. They just had a great offensive game against the Eagles' third string. So this week they're gonna sh- they're gonna drop the ball on the, on the offense. 24-17, 49ers with the upset. Ooh. That's what I got on that. Hey man, this next game, I don't even know if we should even talk about it. So we got the Pittsburgh Steelers, Big Ben. On his last ride. Well, I don't call them the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> I call them the Shitsburg Squealers. There you go. Um, and they're going to they got to go to Kansas City. To Arrowhead, man. Who you got have this you, game? Have you seen the Steelers defense play this year? Nope. I ain't seen they, the offense they, play They have much. a great defensive player in TJ Watt. Man. But their defense is trash. Their defense is terrible, man. Tomlin and Big Ben both was on the camera, and they was at the podium at the press conference. They didn't even give the fans any kind of hope this week in this game. Uh, they got beat 36 to 10 a couple weeks ago when they went to Arrowhead. They got beat in every single facet of the game. Special teams, defense, offense. I even think the Chiefs beat them, beat them out of the beat them out of the stadium and beat them off the beat them to the bus after the game. But, but you know what, man? I said this to you earlier today. It's something about Pittsburgh. That when everybody is counting Pittsburgh out, for some reason, they always come up big in a, in moments like this. Man. I think I think it's going to be a big surprise retirement party 
right after the game for Big Ben because this is his last game. I got the Chiefs winning. I got I, the and Chiefs. I, I got the Chiefs winning big. I think it's going to be a lot but, to a little bit. But I, I got the Chiefs winning big. But I would not be surprised if Pittsburgh comes out and has a, a, great, kick. a great game and, start and this game the, ends up a lot closer than – than we thought. It ain't going to be close. They may come out and do an onside kick to start the game off, and that'll surprise you. But that's the only thing that's going to happen. It's going to be a whole lot to a little bit in Arrowhead. Big Ben, you you had a great career right off in the camp. Take Mike Tomlin with you. That's how that's going to go. All right, now we got the Monday night game. So which, we got the big game. Which I think is probably going to be. The NFC West. I think it's probably going to be the biggest game of, of the weekend. You got the Arizona Cardinals playing against the Rams. Who you got? Now, you know Melo's watching. We don't want to make him mad. Now, you know he's a Rams fan. You know he's our brother now. This one's, this one's tough, man. It's tough. I, uh, it's, it's the NFC I'm, West showdown I'm, now. I'm going with the Rams. Woo. But it's all going to depend on Matthew Stafford. If, if the Stafford that's turning the ball over, guy is playing. I think uh, – I think – uh, if he's turning the ball over, then I, I can see Arizona winning easy. And but I think you said it right, man. They they split they split during the regular season. Now, one thing we know, the Cardinals ain't been playing as good because Hopkins ain't been playing. So, when Hopkins ain't been playing, they ain't been playing as good. Stafford has been turning the ball over. Stafford has seven interceptions in the last three games. You know, this is where and, they got him for. And – Stafford has really never played in a big moment. He ain't played in a big moment, man. This like is why they got him. What's he played in one playoff game? And that's is it. Is that it? One? That's it, man. He ain't one playoff play game, and that game wasn't where it was uh, they were supposed to win. I'm telling you. So, yeah. this game, they're, they're favored to win. They're, favored. they're at home. It's a trap can game, he, though, man. Can he play in this? Can he show up in this big moment? I, it's going to boil down to which quarterback's going to play better. Murray or Stafford. One thing we do know, the Cardinals are eight and one playing on the road this season. They are better they, on the road. They are than better they are on the road. Kyle Murray ain't been playing bad. Stafford's been playing terrible these past few games. Which quarterback is going to play good? Which quarterback is going to limit their mistakes? Which one is going to make the plays at the end of the game? I'm just going to make it simple. I think Murray outplays Stafford, and the Cardinals get the win. Mm. Cardinals I, get the win. Look, thirty-two twenty-four Arizona. Man. I can't. I can't really say nothing about that, man, because I think this game could go either way. It could go either it's, way, it's a man. Toss-up for me. I mean, the way Stafford's been turning that ball over, I, I don't think it's going to automatically. I don't think it's going to miraculously change. Seven interceptions in three games is terrible. Yeah. So I don't think that's going to change, right, man. Well, keeping it in football. Let's see. You know, we got the. The MVP race. It's hot, man. It's hot. It's it's, it's done narrowed down to pretty much two people. Yeah, with uh, it's still narrowed I, down. I still, I, I mean, I think it's narrowed down to between Rodgers and Brady. Rodgers and Brady. That's but it. I still want to throw a uh, who you got? I still, I still want to throw Jonathan Taylor's name out there and Cooper Cup's <sighs> name out there because of the numbers they put up. I don't know. Taylor, man, Taylor, with, Taylor was decent. But with the Colts not making it to the playoffs, it. I Kinda think that drops him. drops him where his name is completely out. Uh, he did have 1,800 yards rushing this year. I mean, really, and, when you and look at 18 touchdowns. That's you really big, look at big it, numbers. Man, I mean, Brady's and Rogers' numbers are close. Huh? I mean, you got uh, no. <laughs> they are close. No, they're very close. They're very similar, man. Listen, man. You got you got Brady's got more yards. Brady has wait a second, 1,200 more yards. Okay. Rodgers has less interceptions. He has the better key. He has he has he has eight less interceptions. He has Brady has lot. Brady has six more touchdowns. Who's got the better QBR? Rodgers has it. All right, but so it's very close. But I would take because what how I would Rogers, take twelve hundred four, four, four interceptions. But I mean, I, but I would take twelve hundred more yards. You're gonna throw more interceptions if you if you throw in the ball more. I've seen quarterbacks throw four interceptions in one game. He's got him four interceptions for the whole season. Yeah, but 12, 12 in a season is not bad either. It's not. Now, I, I, I will say this, man. 5,300 yards and 43 touchdowns no, I, at 44 I, listen, years I mean, old. It's very close. It could go either way. Now, I ain't going to lie, man. I am leaning towards Tom Brady because the Bucks have been hurt by injuries, and he's found a way. I think, what, Goodwin's missed, what, six games? Godwin. God, Godwin's missed games. Gronk's missed games. A.B.'s missed games. 
Uh, Leonard Fournette has missed games. They, he, you got people missing. You got people missing three, four, and five, and six games, and Tom Brady still finds a way to win, still gets his numbers. Uh, plus, he's the goat. Fifty-three hundred so, yards and forty-three playing touchdowns. Playing the way he's bro. playing at this late in his career, you know, he's probably looking the best he's looked in all his years of football. Honestly, I mean, listen, and, and with a depleted roster, man, you got to give it to him. Tom Brady has thrown for over five thousand yards twice in his career. It's tough, man. It's tough. Is, it's is tough. that what it's twice? twice? Twice in his career, twice. I believe. Twice. twice. Yeah. It's tough, man. So. You got to give it a time, man. I, it's I the most. It it's the most yards he's ever thrown for. I would give it a time, man. I and think. he's only thrown for over forty touchdowns for forty or more touchdowns twice, and that was last year with Tampa, this year with Tampa. Yeah, I think. Uh, I hate that it's just all these yards, just touchdowns, just happening with Tampa. But yeah. we know no correlation we, to that. It's we just know. Tom Brady. We know that it's down between Rodgers and Brady. Yeah. And I, you know, I gave. Jonathan Taylor is a shout out, but Cooper Cup needs a shout out too, man. This Cooper man, Cup. this man was fifty three yards away from man, having two thousand yards receiving. I wish they and had, 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 had Joe Burrow's touch- name in the mix. And he had sixteen. Joe Burrow's name should be in the mix for what he's done and turning that franchise around. Even though I got them losing to the Raiders, Joe Burrow's gives them hope. His, his name, his name was it, it was in the mix, but it ain't it ain't down to. I don't think you could put him above. It. The four people we just named. Nah, you, I, I don't know. Taylor. Cooper. Cooper nah, Taylor had eight, 1,800 yards and 18 touchdowns with Carson Wentz as his quarterback. That means that teams were stacking the box because they knew the Colts was running. Carson had a, and he still Carson had, had a decent he, season, though. No, man. man. He still had 1,800 yards and they were stacking the box to stop him. Now, nah, yeah, Taylor did good, man. Taylor, Taylor did good. I and had Derrick think- Henry. As my first, but look, just think, just think with Cooper Cup. Just think if Robert Woods would have never gotten hurt, and it, the it, kind it, of pressure that 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 takes away from Cooper Cup. Well, it ain't Cooper, like Stafford was looking his way anyway. But he still took pressure off of him. Well, he got OBJ over. He ain't looking his that, way. That ain't really taking pressure off. Because he don't look at nobody but Cooper Cup. OBJ is not the same that's guy. That's why they gonna lose. That's why the Ra- that's why the Rams is gonna lose to the Cardinals. Because he's only gonna look to sta- he's only gonna look Cooper Cup's way. Cooper Cup had a good season though. He had a good season. Yeah. So, who, but, so I got I, I got Brady. Okay. I got Brady. See, I, I got Brady also. Of course. And it ain't just because it's the home team. It is. Man, fifty three hundred yards and forty three touchdowns, and you the man's forty four years old. You didn't have nothing good to say about thirty seven touchdowns and four wins. I didn't say yes bad. You didn't say it's I didn't good. say yes. I didn't say it's say not good. good about Aaron it Rogers is good. To the fans. Aaron Rodgers is playing great. That's all you got. But he's not playing you got better. All these stats. He, but he's not playing better than Brady. He threw for 4100 yards, 37 touchdowns and four interceptions. Four interceptions is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. If they do meet up who you got, Bucks or the Packers? If we meet up, <laughs> if we meet up, if we meet up, it will be in the NFC Championship game. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers fold. In the NFC Championship game. That is what they do. That's what they're known for. Ever since they won that Super Bowl, when Rodgers won that Super Bowl, that's what they've been known for. They make it to the NFC Championship game, and they fall. I just wanted y'all to know that he's biased. I mean, all the fans see you're biased. So. Hey. You're, you're y'all, very biased. Y'all thought I was crazy last year. The year before, you wouldn't. nobody was hearing me say, we this, I we're that. But last year, everybody heard me say it. We won the Super Bowl. I can't wait for Tom Brady to retire and we stop all this nonsense. <laughs> so, uh, keeping it in the NFL, man, we've had a lot of coaching changes. And uh, it seems like it's been a lot of double standard going on with the black coaches. We only have one active black coach in the NFL, and it's a lot of coaching jobs. What's your take on that, man? I, man, for real, what I think is the teams who do uh, – Mike Tomlin fell into a great situation. He did. Because he became the coach of a team that was already in place to win, so he didn't have that pressure on him. Right. A lot of a lot of black coaches that do finally get a a, a chance as being a head coach is at a team that's not that good. So they're trying to build, but then they get let go after two or three seasons. Like they yeah. don't get to go long enough to actually get some some of their type of players in to, to make a push. Yeah, yeah. Really so good. I think uh, that some of these teams need to give give these coaches 
more of a chance. Give them a few more years to try to get something done. Unless they're just that bad. Yeah, I, don't, I think the Texas coach, David Collie, I don't think he was the right man for the job down there. But look at their situation, man. Look situation at all the stuff there. that's going on. You, you don't have Deshaun Watson. So you, you're playing... What's his name? Dave, Davey Mills. David Mills. Yeah, What's his Dave, name? Mills. Mills as quarterback. Yeah. Like you, you got. Tyler, you don't Tyler really never did get to play. Yeah, like you don't really have he the really pieces have to really to really make you uh, shine. Like now, nah. I do think Brian uh, Brian Flores. I, he, that was a surprise. He man. got the he got the raw deal. I think man. I think he I think he got the raw end of a deal. He's had two back to back winning seasons. Even though they didn't get in the playoffs, he had two back to back winning seasons. At Miami, usually that at least buys you another year having a winning season. He got fired. Um, that's shocking, man. I do think that he deserves another job. I think he will get one. So I think that will be the thing I want to see. With his name being in the hat for a lot of these vacancies, who will give him a chance? If they don't, if he doesn't get another head coaching job, then I think there should be somebody to look into this because he's definitely going to be more qualified than a lot of other candidates applying for jobs. The, the thing is, is the only open jobs are really teams that's not that great. Well, I wouldn't I say I mean, you that. got a couple. You got a couple. The Raiders are in the playoffs. The Raiders are in the playoffs, and they do have a head coach of vacancy. So I think the Raiders' job, is it's, it's got to be looked at as a good job. I think the Miami Dolphins' job is a good job. Like I said, they just had back-to-back winning seasons. Now, I'm going to just throw this Mi- out there. Minnesota's a, is, is Minnesota's decent. decent. You I, got Kirk Cousins. I think the Denver job is a is a good one if Denver's you, can, job is if a you great, can get a quarterback. If you can get a quarterback. I like the Miami job. Uh, Miami, they ended the season well. It's a free agent attraction because it's Miami. But I'm going to tell you all something, man. I'm throwing this out there. Don't be surprised. If that guy from Alabama gives it one more crack and Nick Saban goes to Miami. I'm throwing it out there now, No man. way. I can see Nick Saban. He don't have nothing else to prove in college. The game is different now. See, back when he did try in Miami, you got to think. The college game and the NFL game was completely separate. Nowadays, it, the gap has been bridged. You have a lot of NFL teams running college schemes. So I think he could fare better this, this go around than before. He has nothing else to prove. Go back to my. I can see Nick Saban looking at an NFL job and trying to trying to finish what he started in Miami and show and say he still got it. Have you been drinking? No, because not at all. You said like you just said he has nothing else to prove. Why would he leave? Why would he leave? Why would he leave the situation he's in now, where you're one of the top teams every single year? You playing for championships every single year. We are want a challenge. Not at that stage. I mean, he, he's already proven he could do it in college. The only the only blemish on his whole coaching career is people think he can't do it on the NFL level. But if you go, but he can. I, and I'm telling you, look at the look at the NFL game now. You're seeing a lot of college coaches, Kingsbury, uh, Kingsbury, a lot of them running Wildcats. The NFL now are running college schemes. I think he can really come into the NFL and really do something. I mean, or he can still keep dominating college football, which he looks bored with. Did you see the picture of him when he won the SEC championship? You would have to be going into a great situation for that to happen. Well, And you know, Miami is a good situation, but not a great situation. Who else, who else, so knows, two, who else knows two are better than Saban? But still, that, that's not two. That's one player. Uh, they just they just had back-to-back winning seasons. Yeah, but that's that's a good situation, not a great. BTG, tell me what y'all think. Nobody man. nobody looks as the looks at the Dolphins as a contender to win a Super Bowl. They can win their division. They had nine wins. But BTG, they, you tell you, us what you, you think. think. They, you think they do can win that think, division? Do you, you think they you do you really think that they have a chance to be better than New England or Buffalo? I think I think Nick Saban could really. He won't get out coached by Belichick. It'll be a, it'll be a chess match. Nah, he's gonna get out coached. You think Belichick is that much better than Saban as a coach? Yeah. When it comes to when it comes to being a great coach on the Woo! NFL level and a great coach on the college level. I don't know, yes. man. I mean, the coach is coaching. Urban like I Ma- said, Urban Meyer came to the league. And Urban Meyer wasn't a good college coach. He just had good running quarterbacks. He won. He won championships with running quarterbacks. If you can run, you can play with him. He wasn't a good college coach. Saban is a good college coach. He's a good coach, period. 
Y'all tell me what y'all think. Can Nick Saban make the jump to the NFL, or should he stay in college and keep dominating? And he's going to stay in college, man. There's we'll, we'll, we'll no see. other way around it. We'll see. Now, man. which coaches do you think are going to get a shot at being a head coach? Or I, which coaches that got let go do you think – I we'll think get uh, another shot. I think one of them that I really see that to me seems like a no brainer. I'm just waiting for it to materialize. I think Byron Leftwich should get the Jacksonville Jaguars job. I don't see I don't see it no other way. I think they need a quarterback's coach type of guy for Trevor Lawrence. Byron Leftwich, you know, he's well known for Jacksonville. He played for Jacksonville. He's got a championship under his belt. He's got the pedigree. I can see him getting that job and doing well in molding Trevor Lawrence. You're hoping that he leaves Tampa. I am hoping. I know you are. You're hoping that he leaves Tampa. I, I want to see Tampa now, get back in the dungeon. Now, my take is I actually believe that Bruce Aarons is going to retire after this season. Really? I, re- I really believe that. I believe you. I'm good. I'm with and you. I hope he does. I believe if he's already if he's already been talking with Leftwich and Leftwich knows that this position is going to be open, I think Leftwich stays and becomes Tampa's head coach. It's like I know he has ties with Jacksonville, but why go to Jacksonville and take a chance on not being good for the first few seasons and being let go when you can be in Tampa with mm. the people that you've been coaching and they know your system, you know them, and be in a great situation to where you can be in that kind of situation to succeed. I think I think Tampa only got a one, two year window. I don't really see Tampa having a big future. Y'all in win now mode. I get it. I don't think y'all have a big future. It's Why not is it because of Brady? Yeah, because Brady's gonna be gone. Trevor Lawrence is the future, but, man. But listen though. But Trevor listen, Lawrence is the future. But listen. With the offense that we have and the defense that we have, even if Brady leaves, what quarterback would not want to come to that situation? Well, as a coach, would you want to be known for bringing a team out of the basement and really changing the culture? Or would you want to be known for just... As a coach that's winning? A coach that's just... You want to be known as a coach that's winning? How long y'all going to win? Because Tom Brady's... Once Tom Brady's gone, y'all winning's over. Was y'all winning before that's what, Tom Brady? That's what you think. Was y'all winning before Tom no, Brady? No, but we wasn't, right, getting the, we wasn't getting those people either. Y'all yeah. had the same people. Besides no, we Tom, didn't. Tom Brady and Gronk. And Leonard Fournette. Tom Brady brought on them. And guess what? When Tom Brady leave, they leave it. No. All right. Why? When they going to get paid. All right. Remember what you were saying three, four years I t- ago? I told you. you we're going we to get saying? another big name quarterback. What was you saying three, four years ago with Tampa? Nothing. You wasn't saying nothing. The same thing you were saying with San Fran. And I, I can't wait for you to go nothing. back to saying nothing. Nothing. Tom Brady. Because y'all ain't being nothing. That's all right. We can re- y'all better hope y'all don't see us. Yeah. Y'all got to get there first. Y'all better hope y'all don't see us. We winning this week. You make me want to take the Eagles. Lord, Lord, you make me want to take the Eagles. But I tell you what, we're going to flip I would them. say you making me want to take the Cowboys, but that will never be said <laughs> ever in life. All right, man. So listen. But uh, I think Ty Bowles deserves a shot also. Ty Bowles does deserve a shot. Now, Ty Bowles and, got the uh, wrong end of the The game. offensive coordinator for uh, for Kansas City. Uh, yeah. I think Eric Benini ben- 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 or yeah, however you say his he's name. He's got a real good scheme, man. Yeah. He, he definitely deserves a shot in also. In the offensive league, he should. He deserves a shot, man. Do you, think, do you think Joe Judge will get another job? No. I don't think Judge <laughs> Mike, gets... I mean, Matt Nagy? No. Heck no. <laughs> Mike Zimmer? Mike Zimmer will probably get another job. He, he just... Kirk Cousins ain't that guy, man. Kirk Cousins can't get it done. Vic Fangio? No. I didn't even like him getting hired. And I already man. know your take on David Culley. <laughs> hey, man, he wasn't a guy in Houston. He wasn't a the guy. They had the wrong guy then. All right, man, look. Let's talk a little NBA. We got NBA. We got a lot yes. going on, man. So, we got a lot of good games, a lot of shuffling going on at the top. Who's your top five teams right now in the NBA? Top five in order or or just give top me, five? Give me teams. your power with top five, man. In give, order. Me your, give me your top five in order. All right, I'll start with, with mine. My number five okay. is the Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee I Bucks. I think Milwaukee is moving up. Uh, they're, they're moving up that ladder. Okay. 
they're they playing really well right gotcha. now. Yeah, yeah, they are. You know, they just uh, Greek freak. They just beat the brakes off the Warriors. They did, man. Um, I I, rem- I know I looked up and I seen the score, and first thing I did was uh, send a, a group text out to to all the BTG fellas. <laughs> Like man, are y'all seeing this? Yeah, it was crazy. Like it was, they was, the Bucks was up thirty with like six minutes to go in the second quarter, man. Yeah, like it was, it was ridiculous. It was crazy. All right, my number four. Yeah. Is John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies? A lot of people surprised. Them boys are playing. Them boys is playing, so man. Wow, man. Them boys is playing. They are looking really, really good. Yeah. My num- number number three, man. I have the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets, uh, they're they're one of those teams like they kind of have. They've been resting but a lot I think, of players, but but even with resting players, they still have one one of the best records in the league. They do. Uh, when it, you got KD, you got James Harden, like you can't really go wrong with with picking them. No. Uh, number two, I have the Golden State Warriors. Got to be a top. Got to be one of the top. Steph Curry He's playing has out been man. on a terror this year. He has been. But that'll make Nick but, Holden, but, that'll make his day right there, man. Here you talk he about hasn't him. been shooting at, at well here lately, though. And I think that's what, for me, that's what's dropped them from that number one spot yep. to number two. Steph hasn't been that. playing at well. I agree with you, man. Uh, Dray- Draymond wasn't playing in the game against the Bucks, and it showed that it that showed he, that he ain't playing. That he was really he plays missed. at the All Star level when Steph is playing for some reason. When Steph ain't playing, he's non-existent. But you got to think too, man. The Warriors are gonna ha- they're trying to readjust now with with Clay being with back. Clay being, yeah, you know they're trying to readjust, trying to get back Boy, in the tough, groove of things. They tough. But th- but I still think they're gonna be one of the top teams. You can uh, see them there at the end of the year. I, I can I can see them. I can see them. Uh, possibly coming out of the West. That's big. That's big. The team that they're going to have to worry about coming out of the West is who I have at number one, and that's the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns. Who thought they Chris still Paul, be there? Devin Booker, them boys are playing great ball they right now. They are playing great ball. They got the best record in the NBA. Yeah. Them boys they got, are playing, playing they got very the best well. record in the NBA, man. They're playing tough. Booker's not even shooting as good right now. But they still finding ways to win, man. They got depth. They are playing good, man. Yeah. So I think we in agreement on we in agreement on one and two, definitely, man. I'll tell you what, you got the Nets and the Bucks in your top five. I do not. I don't have them in my top five at all. Please don't tell me you got Chicago. At number five, I got the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> no. Fools at go. number five, I got Chicago Bulls. Fools now, I go. will say this, man. Chicago's lost a couple in a row. They lost Fools three go. in a row. Uh, they playing tough, man. I think Zach Levine and and DeRozan, that combo's been playing good. Vujicic's been playing good. Uh, like I said, they they need to work on their depth, and I and they they starters and their players are looking a little bit tired. But other than that, man, they definitely a top five team in the NBA. I do believe in them, and I think they're going to make some noise. They already shocking people. I think they're going to make some noise, man. At number four, a team that you did not mention. I get the Miami Heat, man. The Miami Heat is tough right they now. Have, they have been playing. They've been I mean, playing great. Let's look at it like this, man. Butler's been injured. Harrow and Robinson have been getting it done for them. Them boys been filling it up. So with them two shooting and leading the way, uh, this upcoming week, a couple of games they got. They got the Hawks twice. They got the Raptors. They got Portland. They got the Lakers. All those is winnable games. So look for them to win and gain confidence and keep climbing the ladder. Don't sleep on the Miami Heat. When I Jimmy the, Butler I coming the heat, back? I had the Heat at six. The Heat's, the heat's looking good. At number three, I'm with you. I don't know if you had these, them number three. I got the Grizzlies, man. Uh, the Grizzlies has won 10 straight games, and they ain't won against no fluke teams. They done beat the Suns. They done beat the Lakers twice. They done beat the Nets. I mean, they done beat the Cavs. They done beat the Clippers. They done beat the Warriors. They done beat all but, these playoff teams. But the Lakers... The- the Lakers is 
I mean, I know, you a Lakers, you I know you're a Lakers don't fan, you, but, gonna say but that ain't good wins. That's a good win. No, man. You beat L.A., L.A.'s ready now, L.A. That's, that's not good wins, L.A.'s man. L.A.'s all right, man. They, Come on. So, I mean, they played, you said the last 10 games with no slap, the last eight out of 10, <laughs> because playing the Lakers twice was but you know what, was man? easy buckets, man, easy but, wins. But but let's not discredit. Now, Moran has been playing out his man. I think Moran is making that move up to that next level, you know, but... Moran was hurt for a lot of games, man. And the Grizzlies still was winning, man. They are playing great defense. Yeah, they got to watch out. And, and, and I know we've had a lot of talk in BTG about comparing Morant to Derrick Rose's MVP season. They both averaging almost identical numbers. I don't think Morant can get the MVP because you got players like Steph, you got players like Durant, and you got a dark horse like LeBron who's probably having a crazy great season in year 19. Uh, but you got those players playing good, man. But Morant's got the Grizzlies going. Gian, Giannis got to be in that combo. Giannis, also. Giannis definitely got to be in the combo. He's definitely got to be in that. He's combo. definitely got to be in the. But combo. for me, Steph Curry. Steph Curry's playing good. Gonna be, if if if, but he's gonna have to pick it back up because the way he's been shooting here lately hasn't been that great. And but I'm if with he you. can that's, pick that's it back, if he to. can pick it back up. Right, right now, if the, if the season was to stop right now, I think Steph Curry easily is MVP. He's easily MVP. Easily. And like I said, I got the Warriors two and the Suns one for the exact same reasons with you. I think uh, Steph Curry ain't been shooting well. I think they need to make some adjustments because with Clay back, you got to figure out how to keep Wiggins and Poole going. Wiggins and Poole have been playing great ball. Their shots are going to get limited now that Clay's back. So they got to figure out a way to get all these players involved. And then once they figure that out, you got Wiseman, who's about ready to start with team activities. Then you got to figure out how to get him going. Hopefully they can get that stuff going. I still think they're going to be there at the end of the season. And, of course, Phoenix Suns and booking them, they the elite team in the NBA. It's like nobody's really talking about them. They just going about their business and doing mm-hmm. what they're supposed to do. So that's our top five. A little bit different, but a lot of the same teams there, man. Uh, you hit it on the nose when you said you think Steph Curry – would be the be the midseason MVP. Do you think he's the best player in the NBA right now? Right now? Right now. I mean, if today. I think if I think he's today, who's I the think, king of the league right if now? If I today? think he's the if I think he's the MVP, if we basing it off of this year, who's the king of the if league? If we basing right it now? off of this who's year, who's sitting in the throne? If we basing it off of this year, I say Steph. You think Steph is sitting in the throne that's, right that's, now? That's why I think I think he would be MVP right now. So you just said you just watched Steph and them get handled by the Bucks. That don't mean nothing. And you watch Giannis have a 30-point triple-double. That don't mean – that one game don't mean that He's the, the reigning best. MVP, NBA MVP. But that don't mean you the best. NBA MVP, finals MVP. Okay. 30-point triple-double. What's your name? You act like Steph ain't a MVP. What? Not no finals. But uh, MVP of the league. I'm just saying right now this is, this is Giannis's league. The past three years has been Giannis's league. He just reminded y'all of that game when they busted the Warriors. Giannis is the king of the league. I don't want her about no Kevin Durant. I don't want her about no LeBron. I don't want her about Steph or any any other light skinned guy you want to bring in. I don't want her about none of them. Amen. All right. This is Giannis's league. He's the big dog in the league right now. He's the big buck sitting in the throne. So that's the MVP. He should be the MVP. Back for Beasley. Easily, he's the best player in the league that nobody's talking about, and it's disrespectful. This would be, this could be his. So if the league was the end right now, give it to Giannis. This year, you think Giannis is going to get it? I think it Giannis over, should is going to get it over. Sti- this could be his fourth. This could be his fourth season, averaging twenty-five, five, and in like eight, and he'll be the only player to put those numbers up in four seasons in his career. And right now, he's done. His numbers done get better. This is Giannis's league right now. Everybody talking about Kevin Durant's back and the way he's shooting. Everybody's talking about LeBron. He's playing great year 19. Steph is looking good and he's got the Warriors going. Don't I see? like I like Giannis. Giannis I've is been the guy. I've been big on Giannis for for years. If you had to have the, but, the number one pick in the but draft right now. If you think that he's having a better season I think he's having than better. Steph Curry right now, I give it to him. You are tripping. I give it to him. If I had to pick one player right now in the NBA and everybody was in the draft, I'm taking Giannis. I'm taking Giannis over everybody in the league right now. That man's unstoppable. He's got the Bucks going. You just seen what he just did to the Warriors. They ain't have an answer for him, and Draymond wouldn't have changed that. Give me Giannis, man. Period. Hands down. Yeah. 
Hands down. That's where we're going with that. So, hey, y'all tell me what y'all think, man. Who y'all think is the best player in the NBA? I want to see who y'all think. Um, do you think it's Steph? Do you think it's And we're not talking about last year, the year before, the we're year talking before about that. Right now. We're talking about this season. We, I don't want to hear about LeBron's this season. whole resume and how he got four championships. I want to hear that. I want to hear it. This season. He's playing good. I want to know who is the best player right now in the NBA. If you don't I think say it's, Steph. I say Giannis. I think the people say Giannis. But we'll see. I, don't, I think the people going to say Steph. Uh, we'll think, see, man. Plus, yeah. I think the people will say Steph. Just because they never want to agree with you. We'll see Who wants that. to agree with Chris Jones? Well, some people may say LeBron, which I can agree with that too. I mean, I there's only a couple of people that will say that will come out and say LeBron, Q and Walker. that would be people Q? like Q Walker. Q Walker would say LeBron. People like Q Walker. He's Derek Stevens is gonna say, say Jordan. <laughs> He's gonna say Jordan. Listen. Jordan ain't got a stat this year. He's gonna say Jordan. He's definitely <laughs> gonna say Jordan. He's gonna say Jordan the best this year. He ain't even got a stat. He, he's definitely going to say That's Jordan. what he's going to say, sure. man. But we'll see how that go, man. So, that was a good show we had. Now we're back to our best segment, best segment of the show for me, our giving back segment. And we got to do it for none other than the great Martin Luther King on his birthday. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., today is his birthday. Today is his birthday, man. Monday is... You know, Martin holiday. Luther King Jr. holiday. Uh, for uh, a lot of y'all that don't know about Martin Luther King, man, uh, he was a major contributor in the civil rights movement in the 1960s. He did his I Have a Dream speech. He delivered that in 1963. He's responsible for the Civil Rights Act in 1963, which helped eliminate discrimination in uh, the job market as well as in public places. And he was heavily involved in the Voting Rights Act in 1965 that gave African Americans the right to vote. Um, hey man, did you just say for those of y'all that don't know, if anybody don't know a that lot of people, about a lot of Martin Luther King Jr. is uh, I mean we got <laughs> been we got, living under a rock. Man, but you you'd be surprised, man. People celebrate. He's like one of the only people that they that they talk about in Black history because they is. don't teach us about all the other. Uh, people in black I mean, history that did know. great I mean, things. Lot, they teach us about a, like Rosa Parks and Martin a lot Luther of people, King. And, so just, just to give everybody... You don't hear them, but, but, but they people, definitely should know People, people needed to know it. People needed to know that this is a national holiday. One, he fought for us to vote. I so get, people I get holiday pay for that day. And, <laughs> and time and a half for Martin Luther King Day. There you go then. Yeah. Yes. It's definitely a holiday. It's definitely a holiday, man. But he fought for the rights for us to vote. And... Uh, a lot of African Americans, man, he's the reason that he fought for us to be equal and be able to get certain jobs, man. So this, this is definitely a giving back segment to none other than Martin Luther King. That's why I wore yeah. my Black Panther because he's the real Black Panther of the U.S. Hey, uh, man, he's a, the a real king. He's a real king, man. Had it, it's even in his name. And I and I advise people, man, if you've never been to Memphis, you've been to Memphis. Yeah. If you've been, if you never been to the Civil Rights Museum in Memphis, I strongly advise and urge you to go. Take your family, take your kids. It's it's very beautiful. You learn a lot there that they did not teach you in school, man. So I know January just rolled around. I know a lot of people just got their vacation. Definitely put that on your to-do list, man, because I enjoy myself in Memphis and I need to take another trip back there myself, man. Great can, show today, man. Can we get into this random rant? Great show today, man. Nah, because this it's from rant. right here, man. Like in uh -huh, his home, though. In man. his home, man. You know what it, really it makes me so upset. Man, you man, know what really this. grinds my gears, man. Is he's anemic kids these days. Anemic kids, my cousins, my sons, my daughters, man. These kids running around here wearing hoodies in the summer. And then they running around with no coat when it's cold outside. It gets on my shorts and, on shorts and t-shirts, man. It drives me crazy, man. It drives me up a wall, man. I, middle school, high school, and college students. Like the bad weather's coming. Like and we I, got nah, man. Listen, man. It'd be freezing cold outside, and they be in flip flops and shorts and short sleeve shirts. It kills me, man. It gets on my nerves, man. But then it be ninety degrees outside, and they got on hoodies, Timberlands, cold. <sighs> Man. I don't know what's wrong with these anemic kids, man. 
So parents, kids, man, I'm telling you right now, we got bad weather coming, we got snow coming. Make sure y'all got on long sleeve shirts. Make sure y'all got on undershirts up under there. We don't want your chest out. Make Listen, sure you got that on, man. Back in my day, the only time you would see hoodies being worn when it was warm outside as if a chick was trying to hide her pregnancy. That's it. That was the only time you yeah, seen that. Yeah, yeah. And we all knew. We'd be like, oh, she must be pregnant. Man, but I now, know. it's like a, it's like what's popular. Like, it's if you ain't popular. got a hoodie on in the summertime, you ain't, you ain't cool. Yeah. Like, and if you ain't running around with a white beater on in the winter, you saw that's crazy. Make sure y'all stay covered up in this cold weather's coming. Y'all out here trying to look cute with your nose red and runny because you, you out here with tank tops and flip flops on. Please, man, cover up. Cover up. Reverse that, man. It's okay to wear shorts and tank tops to the summer, but make sure y'all bundled up because it's getting ready to get cold today. Also, in the in the wintertime with the wearing shorts and short sleeve shirts and all that, Used to be the other half of, of my people. Yeah. But now, we see in every race, every culture, do this same thing. Like, I don't understand I it, don't man. get it, man. Uh, we got a guy in BTG, Hot Dog, man. He wears shorts all year round. He need to stop that, too. We, we don't stop. That's something we're going to work on. That's the other half of my That's the other half of you. You they, changed that, didn't you? That, I don't do that. You wear sweat. I see you got sweatpants on. Good job. I don't do that. Good job. Get rid of I that. I don't do that. We don't. Shorts uh, Shorts all year round is not okay. Hot dog. It's not okay. Hot dog. Snow's coming. Stop doing. Put stop some pants wearing shorts on. In, stop wearing shorts in the wintertime, hot dog. Put some you, pants on. You, you're making our people look bad out here. <laughs> Put some pants on. <laughs> and put some socks on. And I ain't talking about no no-shows. Put some real socks on. Oh, and speaking of hot dog, the next time I hear this man say Philadelphia Eagles <laughs> over the Buccaneers, I'm going to drop kicking. Him and Drew been hanging out, man. Him and Drew been hanging out. You don't want to keep betting Drew either, man. Man, Drew got You know what I'm saying? Dope. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to say that. Drew is... He just got lucky, man. Did he get lucky? Yeah, man. They they started playing teams that, that yeah. was getting hit hard with COVID. <laughs> he with five games to go in the season, he was ready to take his eyebrows off. And you ended up having to take yours over. off. You ended up having to take yours off. Hey, it's been a few weeks now that it's been starting to yeah. starting to come back. No wonder he I got a toboggan on because it's cold. I know I ain't got his on though. It's all good. But uh yeah, fellas. Another show in the books. Glad to be back with you guys. We'll definitely continue on with this. Tune in next week. Spoken Minds, Chris Jones. Ike Barry. We out. Big 400.